Okay guys, back with another knife video. Nesmic inspired, you know, is an outdoors, an outdoorsman, as a woodsman over the years. I have, I like several different types of knives. Um, one knife design that I always, I always liked, but I had never had one. Uh, oh, drop the phone again. So, good thing I got one of those super duper cases, right? Otherwise, I, I'd be in trouble. So, I'll just put that there. So, um, I always liked the Nesmic design, uh, but I had never had one. And now, this particular knife, uh, is kind of a modern, it's a survival uh, bushcraft, well, it's a bushcraft knife. It's, uh, it's kind of light on the, for the survival side of things, but it will, it will still work uh, as a survival knife. It'll just be a little bit more taxing on you physically if you need to do really big things. So, but this is the, uh, the brush wolf. And uh, I like this knife, and I've liked this knife from the beginning. Um, I got sent this knife probably about a year and a half after it came out. I took off the, uh, I took off the leather dangler, because I, I don't like that dangler that comes with some of these knives that leather dangler and I made my own dangler from webbing sewed it up and everything and uh, it's a double dangler right and then I just got it girth hitched on that ring so you know it makes it a little bit more flexible and more secure right but uh, the case is pretty good the, the, they're the sheath the knife sheet's pretty good, except this part right here with these with these double holes. You can see the rough out of the leather there, and I think that in in my opinion they should have when they did the welt, they should have had that welt come out with this other piece here, and that should have been doubled up. And then, I, personally, I think that only one hole is really necessary there if you wanted to, say, tie it off or whatever. Um, but other than that, uh, the sheath is, is nice. As with the Tanimboka Puko knife, the logo is slightly off-centered. You know, I think they need to take, they need to take these sheaths and they need to take a measurement and, 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 and then adjust that adjust that for when they wrap it around that, that's that's just my opinion okay it is what it is I didn't make it so I'm just giving my feedback I'm not trying to be too critical but that's just my opinion about that now let's get on to the knife because we're we're uh, we're gold breaking here, you know. We're dragging, dragging tail. So, because we're under ten minutes already, so I put the lanyard on here because I consider this more of a bushcraft knife. I I did do an initial video or two on this knife um, a few years ago. And it had the factory edge on it, so I did the video with the factory edge, and I recommended the knife uh, as, as something to consider if you like the style knife. Has the continuous curve, okay, which is very, very, uh, you know, indica indicative of the the Nesmic style, okay, and. Uh, 
that continuous curve is is uh, is is very prominent on a Nesmic blade. So they did the continuous curve. The handle is more or less straight off of the curve, though it's the Nesmic kind of like you know there's a curve comes up and then back down. This is more modern. It has a a two two finger area there to the uh, to the handle. Plus you can back up on it to like do some you know minor chopping. Um, I would say you could use this in the same way as say uh, maybe like a wood lure knife but just a little heavier duty application than a wood lure knife uh, simply because it's just a bit larger. It's the same thickness, I believe it's four millimeters thick. Um, so I mean just a, just a little bit heavier application just because it's longer, okay. Um, yeah. Because you you know a knife like your wood lord is going to have a bit shorter uh, knife blade. Now I did convex. I did a really nice convex on this knife. Okay, so this edge is completely convex. It is very very sharp, and uh, you know you could do feather sticks all day long with this knife. And then it has something that I like the saw back. Uh, this particular knife also has uh, the 90 degree spine, um, which I'll demonstrate here for you. This particular fire steel is not great. Uh, this is a BCB. It, it comes and goes. I don't know why. Just kind of like those Ray Mears ones there. They, it comes and goes, you know, on on its performance. See, it doesn't didn't strike there. There it goes. Now it's striking. So, yeah. So the performance comes and goes on that thing. But as you can see, 90 degree spine there for striking fire steel. Um, has bow drill divots. Just like most of your tops knives have those divots because it's just an extra tool in your toolbox. Okay? I mean you could do to use it as you know as a bearing block for your spindle and do bow drill. I've done bow drill a bunch of times, you know, just on video for you guys. But uh, I mean I don't know how many thousands of bow drill fires I've done over the years uh, as practice and just for fun and just to keep the skill up. It's a perishable skill, I mean, but once you have the, con the, the, the concept of how it works down solid, you know, you should always be able to come back to it. Um, there, there is technique to it. There are things to help you. I've covered that in the past. You know, but I don't know. It's uh, some people get it right away. Some people take them longer. You know, it, it, it is what it is. Uh, a buddy of mine, he was uh, he, he. I could remember him telling me. I I didn't say this. I didn't I didn't say this myself. He said it. So I feel okay with, with, with repeating it. But he said, he said, uh, you need to dumb this down for me a little bit. He says, I'll get it. He says, but it's like a brick wall. He says, I'll see through it in time. You know, and um, I was teaching him something. I don't remember what it was. It was a skill. Uh, anyway, so... He, he did get it, you know, but it took a little while. 
But any, anyways, it's it's like anything else, you know. You just got to put your mind to it, and you got to put the work in to get it done. Uh, but getting back to this knife, it's a it's a some people consider this knife but ugly. <laughs> I do not consider this the best looking knife. But it is a nice knife, and it is uh, it is very serviceable, and that's really the bottom line, guys. I mean, to make your knife serviceable, uh, if the edge is not quite what you want, and you need it to be, like I, I made this convex, you know, convex is the most easily serviced edge. And and many years ago. I was perplexed with convex because I had been raised on stones, you know, Arkansas stone. Oh, it got to be 22, inch, 22 degrees, you know. Don't vary from this or you will never get your knife sharp. It, it shouldn't be that hard to sharpen a knife. I mean, you're in the field. You, you may be a thousand miles from nothing. You may be, be behind enemy lines, right? I mean, you don't have access to your work sharp there so you better learn how to do something about it right so my my first intro to the, the to the convex blade was the recon scout there you know and it got it did get dull after a while and I was perplexed as to how I was going to deal with that because I didn't I didn't know how to deal with a convex knife because I had never really encountered one before back in those days. It was just like everybody else back in the Stone Age. That's what I call it when people use stones on their knives. I even hear about people using stones on convex edges. And let me tell you, that is the wrong thing to do. Wrong. You could you can go ahead and argue to, to me until you're blue in the face. But here's the hand. You know, I've been there. I already went through that learning curve uh, many moons ago. Convex is the best and it is the easiest. Because you use something like the, the belt system that I came up with. And you use this type of a leather strop to deal with recurve blades and kukri blades and, and, and all kinds of uh, edges, you are set. You're set. And, and it's lighter. Lighter. You don't have to carry stones. You don't have to carry stones. Uh, yeah. We'll go, we will go back to knife sharpening at some point too okay because I know some guys were sending me emails they said hey what happened about the knife sharpening tutorials and blah 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 but the thing is guys you gotta you got to get that stuff down those those videos were up for years if the internet goes down and you ain't got that information in your head you're screwed okay Please don't rely on these videos. Don't rely on any videos online because they could take all these video down and like that. Everything could be down in a second. Everything could be down in a second. So these skills, you got to get them down. They got to be in your head. You know, don't treat videos like a book where you could possibly refer back to it. I got a lot of books on my bookshelf for reference to help me teach other people in the past and now in the future because I'm going to probably be coming up into a leadership role again when things hit the fan. It's just inevitable. Guys, I'll come back at with you with one more knife video today. I'll see you there.